Hello. Here we are again for another round of Talking Pictures. And today, we're going to thumb through a few pictorial newspapers. So you can see what a great resource they can be in assisting us with our storytelling. In 1866, Dunedin printer Henry Wise announced he'd secured the services of some first-class artists, including Nicholas Chevalier, and some top engravers to produce a monthly illustrated newspaper, which he'd called The Illustrated New Zealander. As you can see here, the first issue was published on the 17th of November, 1866. The images in that first issue included two views of Dunedin, one of St. Paul's Church, one of Lake Wanaka, one of Nelson, and this one of Port Chalmers. You can be forgiven if you think this image looks familiar. It's an engraving of a painting by Captain Thomas Robertson, who was the subject of a previous Talking Pictures episode. It also looks the same, or at least incredibly similar, to an engraving that had appeared on the front page of the Otago Witness more than two and a half years earlier, in February 1864. While wishing him every success, some commentators seemingly found that the quality of the images in Wise's first issue didn't live up to his pre-publication hype. The content of subsequent issues seems to have been similar to the first, mostly views of Dunedin and other places and images of public buildings such as this one of Dunedin's newly constructed Provincial Council building, which appeared in the April 1867 issue. The Illustrated New Zealander survived less than a year. The 10th issue in August 1867 appears to have been the last. However, the Illustrated New Zealand Herald, which was first published on the 1st of March 1868, soon took its place. Like the Illustrated New Zealander, the Illustrated New Zealand Herald contained local views and images of significant buildings, but it also had illustrated reports of local events, and contrary to its title, it also featured a great deal of intercolonial content, especially news and illustrations from Melbourne, where much of the artwork was likely produced. The Illustrated New Zealand Herald was founded by this guy, Richard Thomas Wheeler, an Irishman who immigrated to Australia in the 1850s. He was a bookseller and stationer in Bendigo for eight years, before moving to Dunedin in the early 1860s. Here, he worked for the Evening Star newspaper before going out on his own and founding the Illustrated New Zealand Herald and other publications. So let's have a look at a few images in his flagship newspaper. First up, we have a picture of the Mosgiel Woolen Mill from the February 1875 edition. By this time, the paper was about to enter its eighth year of publication. Wheeler had just employed a new artist. The paper had a new illustrated headline on its front page. And Wheeler had reduced the price to sixpence per issue in an attempt to grow the paper's readership. Also in that February 1875 issue was this illustration depicting the loss of the ship Cospatrick. The Cospatrick was an immigrant ship that caught fire south of the Cape of Good Hope in November 1874 while on a voyage from England to New Zealand. All but three of the more than 470 people on board perished. The survivors had to resort to cannibalising their dead companions in order to stay alive, before their drifting lifeboat was discovered by a passing ship. This impressive bird's eye view of Dunedin appeared in the July 1875 issue. The drawing for the print was done by draftsman and artist Albert Charles Cook, and the plates were made by well-known engraver Samuel Calvert, both of whom lived in Australia. This must have been a work that Wheeler cherished because he kept Calvert's plates, and 25 years after his death, the plates were donated to the museum by his family. In November 1877, around a thousand volunteer soldiers from around the region assembled at Cargill's Monument in central Dunedin for what was said to be the largest muster of volunteers held in the colony to that date. The men fell in, marched to the beach at Fulbury and staged a mock battle in front of an enormous gathering of curious onlookers. It was a spectacle not to be missed. Those that did miss it could get a good idea of what it was like via this illustration in the February 1878 issue of the paper. 
Another big deal was the opening of the main trunk railway in 1878. The occasion was marked with a banquet in Christchurch on the 5th of September. And the next morning, the governor and a trainload of guests travelled south to declare the line officially open. Twelve and a half hours later, the train arrived at Dunedin. Another banquet was held, which is depicted in the centre of this illustration, and the images around the outside show the ceremonies at Christchurch, Palmerston and Dunedin. This image, from the front page of the June 1881 issue of the Illustrated New Zealand Herald, doesn't capture a specific event, but it does show the great progress of the city in the wake of the gold rushes, evidenced by the impressive architecture and the newly established tramway. This illustration, from the same year as the previous one, captures a very significant and very tragic event. Around four o'clock in the morning, on the 29th of April, 1881, the SS Tararua was passing along the South Island's southern coast on its way from Port Chalmers to Melbourne, when the captain altered course for Fovo Strait too early and strayed close to the shore. As he attempted to correct his mistake, the Tararua became stuck on the reef off Waipapa Point. A first attempt to launch a lifeboat was unsuccessful, but a passenger from a second lifeboat eventually made it to shore to raise the alarm. Rescue attempts came to naught, however, and by the early afternoon, the ship was beginning to break up. At about 2.30 a.m. the following morning, there was a great crash as the masts broke and the ship rolled over. By dawn, it had sunk almost out of sight. 131 lives were lost. There were just 20 survivors. In 1883, the Illustrated New Zealand Herald became the Illustrated New Zealand News. The first issue of the new publication on the 3rd of September 1883 included this lively scene of a procession in Princes Street led by a pipe band. In stark contrast to the joyous occasion in the previous image, these images from 1887 show the terrible fire that swept through the Dunedin Iron and Woodware Company's premises early that year and claimed four lives. Wheeler's Illustrated Papers were in circulation for about 20 years, with the last issue of the Illustrated New Zealand News published in September 1887. Wheeler retired in 1891, and he died in 1904. His family donated the bound volumes of both publications that we have just been thumbing through to the museum in the late 1920s. Thanks for watching.